Hi everyone! I came across some research as I was making my recent video about Senko Hanabi. A small team out of the University of Tokyo published a paper investigating how Senko Hanabi make sparks. This on its own caught my attention because looking at a Senko Hanabi, it's not at all obvious where the sparks come from. I mean, they obviously originate from the drop of liquid that is unique to this type of sparkler, but how does this liquid drop make sparks? With other fireworks, it's obvious where the sparks come from. You take a combustible combination of chemicals, mix in some metal powder, and light it on fire. Some of the chemicals turn into gas, which expands and throws the metal powder into the air as sparks. Pretty simple. You can get the same sparks just by dropping metal powder over a flame. Whew, that's bright. The main reason why this research paper interested me was something that I think the researchers discovered by accident. Something that, to my knowledge, has been a mystery until now. That being, why do sparks branch? Based on their research, and research that I have done with the help of Darren Dyke from the YouTube channel Beyond Slow Motion, I think I've come up with a pretty solid hypothesis for why sparks branch. This starts by looking at the properties of a Senko Hanabi, but the goal is to learn more about sparks of all kinds. Certain sparks branch more than others. We've all used the normal stick-type sparklers, which contain a metal powder as we looked at earlier. These sparks typically shoot straight out and then split into several others. This is what I mean by branching. The extreme version of this is a Senko Hanabi. One spark branches into a thousand. If you go to the opposite extreme, you have the sparks from a campfire, made from tiny pieces of burning charcoal, which is almost pure carbon. These sparks almost never branch. They simply float through the air until their fuel burns away and they go out. So what is the difference between these types of sparks? Why do some branch when others don't? Well, let's go back and take a closer look at a Senko Hanabi. What the team of researchers out of the University of Tokyo discovered is that a Senko Hanabi is ejecting tiny droplets of itself into the air. You can see this happening in a clip I recorded in slow motion. The drops shoot out of the surface and become sparks. The way these droplets form you have almost definitely witnessed in your day-to-day -day life. If you've ever poured a glass of soda or seltzer water and looked at the bubbles, maybe had some of them shoot up your nose as you were taking a drink, you've probably noticed the little droplets shooting into the air. This is the same phenomenon that researchers identified to be the cause of the spark generation in a Senko Hanabi. Tiny bubbles form within the droplet, and when they reach the surface, they pop. The bubble leaves a little crater behind in the liquid, which surface tension tries to rapidly pull back into the shape of the drop. In doing so, sometimes a little bit of liquid is accelerated quickly enough to escape the surface and be thrown off into the air. A spark. So that solves the first mystery of a Senko Hanabi. We know where the sparks come from, which was the main point of the research paper. But before we get into how I believe this answers the question of why sparks branch, I'd like to take just a minute to talk about this video's sponsor. I really enjoy good coffee. I have a small espresso machine and I've worked my way through trying most of the brands at the grocery store. So I was happy to broaden my horizons when Trade Coffee came along and asked to sponsor this video. Trade helps you to discover new coffees from a wide variety of sources and ships them right to your door to enjoy. Trade first gives you a quiz to find out what you like in a cup of coffee, how you prepare it, if you like light or dark roast, things like that. Then they curate a selection of coffees based on your preferences and ship them to you at whatever delivery frequency you decide. Whatever coffees Trade sends, you can give a rating to and Trade will use that information to send coffee you like even better in the future. Their selection is very large, so I appreciated the curation in finding some coffee that I really like for myself. If you'd like to give Trade Coffee a try, there's a link in the video description below, and the first 100 viewers who click the link will get 30% off their first bag of coffee. So, we've seen how a Senko Hanabi creates a spark, and we've also learned something about the properties of these sparks. We know that they are tiny droplets of liquid, the same liquid that the large drop on the end of the sparkler is made from. This is useful information. Before I knew this to be the case, I thought the sparks might be solid particles, thrown off by a complex chemical reaction. But now it's clear that the way these sparks are created has more to do with the physics of a liquid than it has to do with chemistry. The only thing contributed by chemistry is the reaction with air that keeps the liquid hot, 
and the reaction that generates bubbles. So, I reached out to my friend Darren Dyke, who is a high-speed cinematographer and runs the YouTube channel Beyond Slow Motion. Darren has access to cutting-edge high-speed camera equipment and was happy to film some sparks to test my ideas. My best camera is capable of 960 frames per second. Darren was able to film sparks at 200,000 frames per second. And this is what we saw. Notice that these are indeed drops of liquid. That part is now proven, and you can see they wobble like a liquid as they float through the air. Now watch this. Did you see the bubble form right before the spark burst? A chemical reaction is taking place inside of these sparks that generates a gas. This creates a bubble, and when it pops, it throws off droplets. If the spark is small, the bubble may be violent enough to split the drop into many pieces. This is a branching spark and it was caused by a bubble. Now we have to come back to the chemistry. The sparks we just looked at were not from a Senko Hanabi. They were metal sparks, specifically iron shavings in a traditional stick-type sparkler. Pure iron and other metals don't create a gas when they burn. They create metal oxides, rust, which does not turn into a gas at these temperatures. So where does the bubbling come from if we're burning a material that does not turn into a gas? I think we can find the answer if we look at a test that has been known for many years in metalworking shops to find out how much carbon content is in a piece of steel. Some steel has more carbon than others, and one way to tell what kind of steel you have is to look at the sparks when you hit it with a grinder. The sparks from high carbon steel branch much more than low carbon steel. Carbon turns into a gas when it burns, which would cause bubbling in the sparks and explain the extra branching. Senko Hanabi have even more carbon, and so the branching is quite extreme. Iron is somewhere in the middle. It has more carbon than steel, but less than a Senko Hanabi. Now, if you paid attention to the start of this video, you might have a new question at this point. We've been talking about how the carbon content in sparks causes them to branch, but earlier we looked at sparks from pure carbon and it barely branches at all, which is kind of weird. But this, I think, is a final piece of evidence that I've correctly identified the cause of branching sparks, which is the generation of gas bubbles inside a liquid drop. Carbon cannot possibly do this because it does not turn into a liquid when you heat it. Carbon sparks are solid, and so they can't form bubbles. Every once in a while, you do see a carbon spark that splits in two, but I believe this is simply a fracturing of a solid object, like a rock splitting in half. It's not the same cause as branching in liquid sparks from burning metals or Senko Hanabi. This is undoubtedly an unusual video for my channel. The focus was not to create a particular project or achieve some invention. It was just to learn something new about the world that I don't think has been discovered before. If my conclusion proves to be accurate, maybe it will lead to better fireworks, or maybe a new kind of particle atomization technique. I'm not really sure. If you know of anyone else that has done this kind of research, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned as much as I did during this process. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.